The time value of money refers to the concept of present and future value. At first, this may seem like a confusing topic, but it's actually quite logical. Let me start by asking you a question. If I owed you $1,000, would you prefer to receive it today or one year from now? I think most of you would say, give it to me now. After all, even if you didn't need the money, if you invested it, say, 5%, you would have $1,050 in a year. Better in your pocket than mine, right? Stated another way, assuming a 5% return, the future value of $1,000 in one year is $1,050. On the other hand, the present value of $1,050 payment one year from now would be $1,000. These calculations were relatively easy because we were dealing with a time frame of just one year. But what if you were trying to figure out what $1,000 invested for 20 years at an annual rate of 5% would grow to? You will now notice two formulas on the screen. If you're good with formulas, then by all means, use this approach. The first one can be used to calculate the present value of a future lump sum payment. The second one can be used to calculate the future value of a lump sum payment. However, if you wanted to calculate the future or present value of a series of payments, in other words, not a lump sum, you're going to need more involved formulas referred to as the present value or future value of an annuity. An annuity can simply be defined as a series of payments. There is a much easier method to use, and that is through the use of a financial math calculator. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but in as little as an hour, our video series titled Financial Math Fundamentals can teach you the basics. If you're choosing the financial service industry as your career, it would be well worth the time investment. In a moment, we will transition to the complimentary introductory lesson. If you'd like to have access to the remaining lessons, it can be purchased within your CY Learning account or at cylearning.com. My name is Corey, one of the trainers here at CY Financial Learning. Whether you're new to the industry or a seasoned veteran, it's important that you know how to do financial math. It can help with many industry courses, but more importantly, when you're working with clients. Now, the best way to learn financial math is through practice, so let's roll up our sleeves and get started. Question number one. Troy's investing $100,000 today. Assuming a 5% annual after-tax return, how much would he have saved in 30 years? There are a number of ways that this can be calculated. You could do a calculation for every single year, either manually or by using a spreadsheet. You could use an algebraic time value of money formula, or you could use a financial math calculator like the Hewlett Packard 10B. Let's take a look at each of these methods. Let's start with the individual calculations approach. If you look to the side of me, you'll see an Excel spreadsheet showing 30 different calculations, one for each year. Let's first look at a few of the calculations. If a portfolio grows by 5% annually, at the end of the year, the portfolio value will be 105% of what it was at the beginning of the year. So using this method, it's easy to see that Troy's portfolio would be worth $105,000 after year one, calculated as follows. $100,000 times 105% equals $105,000. In year two, we'd multiply $105,000 again by 105%, which results in a portfolio value of $110,250 by the end of that year. If we scroll down to year 30, we'd find out the portfolio would eventually grow to a value of $432,194.24. Pretty simple, right? But obviously you can't use spreadsheets on an exam, and doing 30 individual calculations would be a ton of manual work, so this really isn't very practical. Another way to tackle this is to use a time value of money formula, which would be much quicker, provided of course you've memorized the formulas and know which one to use. For example, are you being asked for the future value of a single payment, or the future value of a series of payments, which is referred to as an annuity, or the present value of some future value? As you can probably tell, you're going to use a different formula depending on what you're being asked. 
If you look to the side of me, you'll see these formulas. And I'm sure many of you are thinking, please tell me there's an easier way. Well, fortunately there is. So we're not even gonna get into working through the formula. Let's jump straight to how you can use a financial math calculator to tackle the question. Now, my personal favorite calculator is the Hewlett Packard 10B, so that's the one we're going to focus on, and no, I'm not being paid for this endorsement. But even if you have a different financial math calculator, you'll still find this lesson very helpful because the fundamentals are all the same, regardless of which calculator you're using. You may just have to refer to your user manual a little bit as the labels and keys and processes might be slightly different. For example, on the HP 10B, the interest yield key is labeled as I slash YR, but on the Texas Instruments BA2+, another very popular calculator, it's labeled I slash Y. To understand how a financial calculator works, let me ask you a sports-related question. If a player scores 10 points per quarter, and he plays four quarters, how many points does he score in total? Well, 40, right? But how do we figure that out? But when it comes to math, if you know all but one variable, you can always determine the unknown variable. In this case, we know how many points were scored each quarter, and how many quarters there are in a game, so we can determine the total points scored. Well, financial math calculator works the same way. Now the first thing we're going to do is adjust the settings on the calculator, and by settings, I'm referring to things like how often will payments be made each year. Now most questions will involve annual payments, but more challenging questions could involve a different number of payments, say 2 or 12. If that's the case, you follow this same process to set the calculator accordingly. So to set the calculator at one payment per year, we do the following. Press the 1 key. Then press the downshift key. Now on the HP 10B, this is a colored key that corresponds to the color of the secondary functions on the other buttons. On my version, it's the orange key. And you see the secondary functions are also orange. Then press the P slash YR button. As you can see, that's the secondary function on the payment button. And that's it. Now one of the things I love about the HP 10B is it's easy to check your settings. And the same process also clears the calculator, which is wise to do every time you start a fresh question. So let's confirm it's set to one payment per year. Press the downshift key, then press the see all key, which stands for clear all and clears any numbers that have been inputted before. And your calculator should say one P underscore YR or one payment per year. If it does, perfect. If not, rewind the video and watch this part again. Now let's get familiar with the time value of money buttons that you'll use most frequently when doing financial math calculations. And fortunately, they're all presented in a single row near the top of your calculator, so they're easy to find. They are N, which stands for number of periods, IYR, which stands for interest or yield rate, PV, which stands for present value, PMT, which stands for payment, and FV, which stands for future value. One more button that you'll have to be familiar with is the plus minus button, which indicates a cash outflow. We'll take a closer look at this button as we work through the question. Troy is investing $100,000 today. Assuming a 5% annual after-tax return, how much would he have in 30 years? Well, many students get off on the wrong foot because they just start pounding numbers into their calculator without taking a moment to think about what they're doing. And we obviously recommend taking a different approach. Get in the habit of writing out the financial math variables first. Take your time here. This is where errors tend to occur. I always start by creating a little template by jotting down the five potential variables. And remember, you don't have to memorize them. They're right there in front of you in a single row on your calculator. Again, they are N, IYR, PV, PMT, and FV. So in this question, N is 30 for 30 years, IYR is five, that's the interest rate. PV is $100,000, that's the amount being invested. PMT is zero, since there are no annual contributions or withdrawals. And FV is the variable that we're trying to solve. Now that the variables have been carefully written out, grab your calculator. We start by confirming that the settings are correct and clear the calculator as we discussed before. Press the downshift button, press the see all key, and your calculator should say one payment per year. Perfect. Now that we've written down the variables, let's enter them into your calculator. Enter 30N, 5IYR, 100,000, the plus minus key, then PV, zero payment, and finally FV, because that's what we're trying to calculate. Now your calculator should say $432,194.24. Now you may be wondering, why did we use the plus minus key? 
Well, keep in mind in this scenario, Troy's taking $100,000 out of his pocket to invest today, resulting in him being able to put roughly $432,000 into his pocket 30 years from now. And because one's going out and the other's going in, the calculator needs to know which is which. In other words, which is a cash inflow and which is a cash outflow. Otherwise, the calculator can get confused and give you either a wrong answer or no solution. So the button that we use to indicate a cash outflow is the plus minus key. Now you don't need to use this button if it's a cash inflow. A present value entry will always be an outflow, so you'll always use the plus minus key for any PV entries. Pretty easy, right? Okay, let's try another. Question number two. Pauline is saving for her child's post-secondary education. She estimates she'll need $100,000 in 20 years. Assuming a 5% annual return, how much would Pauline need to invest at the beginning of each year to reach her goal? Well, this question deals with regular payments, so we have to adjust our calculator to tell it...